so between the PS3 and the PS4, what, what, do you, what have you learned in that time? What are you setting right with the PS4? In my view, we've sort of returned to our roots in a way, which is to build platforms which are really thinking about the consumer first, uh, but then also working with game developers, not just as game content creators, but people whose vision can help inform how we shape our platform and develop it. And those really have been the guiding principles behind PlayStation 4. Where's Black Mask? Let me go! If you insist. Very proud to announce that PlayStation 4 will be available at $399. One of the things that obviously raised the most eyebrows was, was the price, uh, considerably cheaper than um, the Xbox One. Um, is it going to be a while before Sony starts to make money on the console sales themselves? I think the way I'd answer that question is that um, people obviously look to comparisons on PlayStation 3, uh, which was a very tough financial proposition for us in the early stages. What I can say to you is that we are in a very, very different state uh, with PlayStation 4, uh, and I think our financial um, backbone around the platform and around the ecosystem we're, we're building um, will be much healthier much earlier in the life cycle than we've seen previously. We have made contact. PlayStation 4 won't impose any new restrictions. Uh, one of the big debates before E3, of course, was about pre-owned games, uh, and Sony's obviously clearly set out its position on that. Um, did you ever anticipate it would be such a, a big deal, and, and were you always planning to make such a strong stance on this? Um, I, don't, I, I think we weren't planning to take such a strong stance, uh, um, because in our view, the model that has worked around disc-based games um, has served us and the consumer very, very well. Um, so really, we felt that it was important to say that from our point of view, we feel that model is, is still very robust. Um, clearly, we've listened to the consumer and heard that it's very important to them as well. Uh, and that prompted us, I think, also, we heard from consumers that they wanted us to make our, at least, make our stance clear, and that's what I feel we articulated tonight. Uh, tell me more about the relationship with independent developers. It was a very popular part of the presentation when you mentioned how closely you're going to work with them. One of the most popular aspects has been to work with developers to allow them to effectively self-publish. Um, that really changes the landscape. Uh, for an emerging game developer if they can go from being not just a small team that's perhaps struggling to look for visibility um, maybe in the areas of mobile but they can also be their own publisher reach an audience directly via our network and we see ourselves there as two things really it's sort of trying to find great developers curate that content that we think is going to be really resonant with our audience and then secondly allow it to uh, come to market with the mini minimum amount of fuss uh, and the minimum amount of, of barriers.